my name is Roger Clark, and I will put gooseberries in my immigrant jam. Hello, 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 and welcome to Immigrant Jam, the podcast where we love and celebrate everything immigrant, baby. It's a beautiful day here in New York City. I am your host, Lucy Paul. Today's guest is the wonderful, the amazing, the delicious, the nutritious, the very, very illustrious, the Irish, the American, the father, the hero, the cowboy, the actor, the producer, <laughs> Mr. Roger Clark. Hey. Roger How's Clark like. How's it going? Right. Hey, How thanks are you? for having me. Thanks for being here, Roger. It's great to be here. It's not too it's not so cold today. So Roger, how Irish are you? This is a very good question. And it Thank depends you. who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love it. <laughs> yeah, you because know, I know I was born here. Mm-hmm. I was born in New Jersey. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh and uh, and if you ask me which which exit, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I was going, I, from a child, I would be, my mother was Irish. My mother came over here in the 60s. Yeah. And uh, and then eventually, my dad, he was an Irish-American. Both sets of his grandparents were Irish. Mm-hmm. So uh, to, there's really no quick answer to it. I went to Ireland as a child every summer. And then when we were 12, when I was 12 years old, we went over there for good. And then I finished off my high school, basically, over there. So that's like you're a, a double immigrant then. Because kind of. between 12 and 18, that's very formative, right? Absolutely. But then you do have memories until 12. Sure. So when you moved to Ireland, did you feel like an outsider and a weirdo because you talk different? Did Were you the American kid? I was. I was the yeah. Yank, yeah. And I very quickly got rid of my Irish ac- uh, American accent. Right. Because I just didn't want to stand out like a sore thumb anymore. So I very much adopted the Irish accent. And then for some reason, when I went to university, I went to university in the UK. And then now I've got this hybrid thing, you know, it's kind of I'm like a mutt, you know, I'm a mutt, basically. But, you know, I, I both countries are very, very dear to me. And, you know, I, I feel it depends who you ask, Lucy, because when I'm in Ireland, I'm American. And when right. I'm in America, I'm Irish. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you moved over there, was there stuff? I remember moving here and this kid in my class had spray cheese. You know the cheese that you can spray out of a can? And it like blew my fucking mind. Like I I just went nuts. I never had it. But I've seen people just spray it straight into their mouths. Yeah. And that was so American. So when you went over there, was there stuff where you were like, what the fuck is happening? What are these Irish people doing? What is this? Was there stuff that blew your mind that you remember? There was a lot of vernacular differences, which led to Mm. a, a, a lot of hilarity, I must admit. Uh, but to be honest, I was so young, I didn't appreciate how much of a culture shock it really was mm-hmm. until years later. Um, all I was, I was so keen to not stand out. But right. I remember a lot of vernacular, you know, like crack, for example. You go over to Ireland, you have a bit of crack, right? <laughs> In Ireland, and that's that's Irish, that's Gaelic for fun, you know. But in Jersey, you also have a bit of crack. Yeah, but not at 12 years old. (laughs) 13. You wait till you're a little bit older. (laughs) (laughs) 13 or 14, you have a bit of crack. I should come on over, Roger, and have a bit of crack. I'm like, no, thanks. I'm not into that. What? What are you talking about? All this this stuff, Lucy, and now a ride. A ride is sex in Ireland. What? Yeah, (gasps) so like we'd be driving around and it's just. You know, my dad would offer a ride to some of my friends and they'd be like, no, thanks, Mr. Clark, I don't need that. And he's like, well, how are you going to get home otherwise? And we're like, oh, okay, sorry, I misunderstood. Oh, my God, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. lots of two countries separated by a common language, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I remember telling um, some kids a story in which my dad walked into the room naked, which is so normal in Germany, especially, like... Nudism. Oh yeah, saunas. Yeah, the saunas. Everybody's naked all the time. The saunas are awesome over yeah, there. Yeah, it's like the saunas in Germany. In fact, you're not allowed to wear. No, they're you what is stand it called? Out. You look weird if you wear clothes. Yeah, it says. It's like, what's up with that person? It's, yeah. yeah, it says in the saunas. This is a textile-free zone. Like you're not allowed to wear yeah. a, a bikini or whatever. But I remember telling the story, and being like, and 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 then my dad walked in naked, and it wasn't the main part of the story. And all the American girls were like, Ah, what? Ew, what the hell? And like, 
I was like, why? What? And they were like, ew, you saw your dad naked? Gross. And then I became known oh, as come the... Come on. Who hasn't seen their dad naked? Not American people. Oh, they're full Mike? of it. They've seen... Come on. Have you seen your dad naked? I mean... Intentionally, no. Uh, <laughs> and there are one or uh, two. But, yeah, but your just, parents are also immigrants, so. Yeah. They, my dad would. He, he, we'd shower together when I was like two or three. I remember that, but that was about it. Yeah. Right when your <laughs> eye level is of, of a perfect height. <laughs> right? Yeah. My boys are the same. They're like, Whoa, okay. <laughs> so wait, Roger. I remember my dad on the phone with, uh, uh, he's, he was talking about getting old with an old friend of his that we hadn't spoken to for ages. Yeah. And he was like, do you have to stand up before you flush the toilet now? Because he's talking about, because I don't know what who, what audience we're looking for here, but that apparently, apparently your balls drop. The older you get, the more gravity works, you right. know, obviously. It's the same for women, too. Yeah, although, yeah. And he was talking our, about... It's our asses. Yeah. So, but he was talking about the how the testicles often drift downwards, yeah. so, almost to the point where you can... The water makes you feel cold if, you, wow. if you're sitting for a number two, yeah. <laughs> I've yet I to experience it, it but I, I guess we, have this, we share half the same genes, so that's something <laughs> I've probably got to look forward to. Something to look forward to. You um, grew up in Sligo. Yes. Which is also an interesting place, right? It's the west of Ireland. It's a very rural place. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's not known for a lot. It's known for W.B. Yeats, right. a great poet. Yeah. Uh, boy band called Westlife, which never made it big no. over here, but in Europe they were big. They're from there? I remember Westlife. I worked with uh, Mark Feely, I think his name was. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, we did a few shows together, uh, Amdram and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a talented bunch of guys. They did very well for themselves. For them. <laughs> My sister went to Sligo, and um, she spent like a month there and she told me that she went into a store and bought a wallet and the guy in the store told her that you have to spit on a new wallet because then it'll bring good fortune and oh. it'll it'll make you rich. And then in front of her, he just went like and spit a huge wad of Sligo spit on serious? this new wallet that she had just bought. <laughs> and, I never um, heard that before. Uh, yeah, I think that was maybe just he was fucking with her because she's a Taurus. <laughs> He's like Irish tradition. Oh, here, here's a lovely new wallet for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, terrible. Bloody tourist. Yeah. When, so what um, did she do? Did she keep it afterwards? Oh, yeah, she loved it. All right, fair enough. She was so totally into it. Did it work? Did she get rich? No. I always I heard no. you put money in a new wallet or a purse. Yeah. You have to put like a dollar or something in and, and and then as soon as you get it you put like a coin in. Yeah. That's what I've heard. And then uh make a startup. The whole spit thing. Create an app and yeah. then it'll work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then there'll be money in that wallet. Um the Guys don't even have wallets anymore. They have I keep seeing it on social media where they the, 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 just just a button and then all the cards pop out. Well, it's because it's Bitcoin. You don't need a wallet anymore. Are you turning yourself into an NFT? A bit, no. <laughs> I am not touching <laughs> NFTs with a 12-foot pole. <laughs> I've seen some people go, oh, you know, I'm thinking of going into NFTs and then all of a sudden Twitter's like, I hate you! <laughs> you are the worst person in the world! <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, obviously, um, as many people know, but some may not know, are... Arthur Morgan in Red Dead Redemption 2, right? Yeah. Like a cowboy. You play the most American character ever, really. It's the Western genre, yeah. Um, do yeah. you think that Im an immigrant can play a better American than an American because immigrants like over assimilate so they become more American than Americans? Do you oh, know what I mean? That's interesting. I didn't think, I never thought of it that way. I don't think <clears throat> foreigners can play Americans better than Americans. I think it depends on the person. But uh, I grew up watching Westerns, mm. as most people. It's the first film genre. The first film genre. And now we've seen it be translated into all these different mediums, like video games and, um, and Overwatch, too. Overwatch has got some pretty outlandish characters as well. You know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we have a cowboy. Yeah, that's right. I think the success of Overwatch is came about because it has so many different characters in it, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think it's so interesting that, like, immigrants always, a lot of the times, immigrants become more patriotic 
than the people that were born in that country because of this like need to fit in. And I think also this like way of, you know, observing and kind of taking on the identity or like consciously taking on the identity. Do you know what I mean? I do, yeah. And I think America has that a lot too because America of all countries uh, receives immigrants on a larger scale than I, or at yeah. least it's reputed to receive immigrants a lot more than most other countries. You know, my mother came over here in the 60s. She was a nurse mm -hmm. and she met my father in the 70s. And he was second generation Irish. Mm. Um, and yeah, I do think America is one of the things I love. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very much Irish and I'm very much American. Um, and I, one of the things I love about America is its diversity. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I love it for that. And, you know, you see so many different types, especially in a city like this, you see so many different people from different walks of life and you know and that can't help but enrich the culture i think you know yeah i mean in a way there's no such thing as being american anyway yeah what is an american it's like art, yeah. a totally artificial concept the only people who are really american are the ones we've fucked over you know? exactly yeah. yeah you know a sense yep. of identity is is a very different thing in this country you know we all have different identities but yeah it just blows my mind sometimes when i think about it because, you know, it's such, we're so different in America. Everybody's so different. Yeah. And yet we, we, you know, for, for 300 years, we've managed to find some kind of common ground. And mm. It's been very precarious in many, many times. And, but some, for some reason, it's, it's we've, we've managed to hang on. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how much longer we will. But it's we've the Coca-Cola. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's. <laughs> <laughs> So you said you got rid of your accent as a kid when you moved to Ireland. Yeah. And then was there like a moment where you were like, because now you have somewhat of an accent. It's kind of half. Yeah. yeah. It, it rings a little Irish, but it also rings kind of. I'm American in Ireland and I'm right. Irish over here. So was there a moment when, though where you were like. When I went to college, I subconsciously, I didn't even notice. Mm. When I went to college, I, I, it, it, the American seeped back in. Yeah. <clears throat> a little bit. And I didn't even notice it at the time. But uh, I guess I, I stopped trying. Once yeah. Because I went to university in Wales in the UK. Oh, my God. So uh, so the need to be undercover wasn't as necessary anymore. And I was getting older and I was finding myself as an adult, you know. Right. And so, yeah, I, I, I guess it, that's where the Americans seeped back in. But up until... I was totally Sligo, don't you know? Oh, Jez, oh wow. Because yeah. I didn't want to stand out like a sore thumb. They were like, oh, there's the yank over there, you know? Right, yeah, of course. Do mm. you think you overcompensated? I know I definitely did. Yeah, I definitely did. Absolutely. I think that, um, I mean, for a while, uh, me and my friends started talking like this. Like, we wanted to be like Puerto Rican and stuff like that. Like, we wanted to be like the furthest away from German possible. And I went to an international school. I went to the United Nations International School. Oh, just over on twenty third and FDR. Yeah. yeah. And so I had like a little group the baccalaureate. of baccalaureate. Yeah, we did right, the IB. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. And um, and we did not. Oh my God, German it was not cool. I mean, it has never been cool to be German. You know, I love Germany though. Germany's <laughs> awesome. Man. I guess great that, beer, great yeah, food. Yeah, the trains run on time, <laughs> and they do yeah. have a sense of humor. A lot of people say they don't. They do. It's just very dry. It's very dry, and it's and they don't do double meanings. No. They can't do double because, meanings. Well, they have such a diverse vocabulary. They've got words for everything. That's exactly what it is. The words, because in German, you put words together. You can make up new words. What's the nipple again? Is it chest wart? Brustwarze, which is breast wart. <laughs> and, and pubic hair is schamhaare, which means shame hair. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sexual intercourse is Geschlechtsverkehr, which means gender traffic. Gender traffic. <laughs> yeah. That's why Germans make the best cars, because nobody's going home to that. Or nobody's, everybody's like, nah, nah, I'm good on the breast warts and the so gender cool traffic. Job, <laughs> but it's so true. They're so literal, you know. One of my, when we were on tour in Germany, one but uh, he was very open about his porn addiction, and he would go around to all the <laughs> sex shops in Germany, which were a lot 
were far better than they were in the UK. Well, they're, they're basically in every supermarket, there's oh a sex Oh my gosh. So there shop. would be these little booths that you'd pop a euro into, because it was shortly after the Deutschmark went AWOL, and then it was yeah. euro. And he saw, he was telling me once that he saw a very weird porno, mm -hmm. and it was about a man, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't even pornographic. Oh God, I'm scared. It was, it was <laughs> no. a man uh, sucking the udder of a cow, right? <sighs> No. So my friend, uh, I'm going to say his name. It's Mike Moreland. Fuck you, Mike. <laughs> we got you, Mike. You fucking sicko. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he did. He he did something that I had never heard anyone do before. Okay. He decided to complain about the porno pornography that he had purchased. He <laughs> says, "I'm sorry. I don't like this pornography. I don't think it is pornography. This is a guy sucking on a cow's udder." Actually, it was a couple of guys because, you know, they have four. <laughs> I think it was two or three dudes. And he's like, this isn't pornography. This isn't, this isn't, what, I, this isn't what I came here for. <laughs> oh, my God. And then the, I'll never forget the German. I wasn't there, but he told me the story so many times. I, I almost feel like I was. And he said, uh, the German guy in, in defense, and he explained, well, perhaps it is the, the sheer horror. Yeah? No? Yeah? <laughs> And Mike's like, that's your fucking, that's, that's your explanation? <laughs> so wait, he bought a porn without he, knowing he was what in the was booth. inside? He was in the booth. Oh, oh, the so, coin. Oh, okay, good, yeah. good, okay. Wow. Which I've never, ever, ever done. That is Cause, so funny. Because you think of the things that people before you have done in there. I'm not, step, <laughs> I'm not stepping foot in the place. But he, he didn't have that hang up. So he's like, I would like, I, I, I must confess, I, I, I am not at all satisfied with your pornography. <laughs> I, I'm sure good, but that's just the sheer horror, yeah. <laughs> he didn't see the big sign that said "coo porn" on the door. <laughs> wow, that makes me want to go into one of those. Do they still have those? I don't know. The internet might. have. I would have been kind of happy if that's what I got. The internet might have done away with them all. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. Yeah. Wow. You know, this, it's a sad, it's a sad Germany sad and it's porn. Scheiße yeah. porn. Very yeah. big in Germany. Scheiße and Rumpen, yeah. Scheiße and Rumpen porn. Um, do you think that moving at um, as a kid uh, gave you strength of character? Like gave you a strong, made you a stronger person? Because you had to fight and assimilate and, and be a weirdo in the beginning and figure shit out. I don't know if it made me stronger, but it definitely made me, it, it, it definitely helped me. Yeah. And, I, you know, and, and my kids nowadays, you know, with the pandemic and everything, I feel so bad for them. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very keen to get them traveling now this summer. You know, hopefully when everything's finally started to calm down, they deserve it so much. Because I remember that it was such... It was a real luxury for me when I was a kid. I, it really taught me a lot. Right. I don't know if it made me a fighter so much. You know, it depends because as an American going to Ireland, it was, I, I was kind of, it was romantic you know, mm. in many ways. And, but at the same time, I had to, uh, I had to learn. I had to learn a different culture. And that really opened and broadened my horizons in a lot of ways. And I'm very, very grateful for that very grateful for all the traveling that I've done. Uh, and, and, you know, basically at the end of the day, what it's taught me is that we're all the same. Yeah. We're all the same. We all want the same things. We all want cow otter titty porn <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day. Because it's sure hard. Right? Yeah, we all want that. Um, but I feel like, because I didn't want to move when we moved here at all. And Did you not? No. I was kind of excited. Were you? Yeah, I was like, oh, this is cool. Well, you had gone every was, summer, I guess. I feel like I was too dumb to realize how much of a shock it was going to be to me. Right. No, I wasn't adventurous. And I was like very cool in my school at that point. And I was like the boss of everybody. And I had a little crew uh, of boys that followed me around. I was a tomboy and we'd like climb up trees. And I was like, I was set. You know, and I was happy. And I also didn't think I could learn another language. I was like, that, how do you, that, what? I don't I, speak English. I didn't have to deal with that. I made a bet with my dad. I was like, I'm not going to be able to learn English. He was like, yeah, you'll learn it. And I was like, no, there's no way. <laughs> he didn't. And then we made it. Yeah, he didn't exactly. He lost. We made a bet. Um, and he would have had to, um, I wanted a, a, a new Game Boy 
game. Right. I was so, I was like, I'm getting that game. I'm never learning English. And of course, like three months later, and yeah, he never did. <laughs> but my, I. My half sister married a Sicilian. And uh, his parents, I'll never forget, we were in Macy's once. And she's ringing up the mother. She's ringing up the till, you know, and then the, and the total comes up on the, and it's like 80 bucks. And she's like, she says to her son, tell them I'll give them 50. <laughs> and he's like, mom, you can't do that over here. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you don't pay what they ask. You never pay what they ask. <laughs> That's great. I love it. I don't know what I would be like if we had just stayed in Hamburg. You know, I feel like it, yeah, it taught me a lot. It opened up so much. And and then also going to the international school and having met so many people from so many different countries, there was like nothing that was foreign to me. And I think that's like so invaluable. And the experience of learning another language, learning another culture. You know, people who uh, lived in the same place their whole lives, you know, um, it's it's a it's their brain works in a different way. I yeah, think. it's different, and the and the experience the like cross cultural experience, you know, because I think that um, I, I sometimes I wonder like so I used to be very very envious of people who had like an, this like national identity, you know, because I never had that, and that's why I guess I always identified as a New Yorker, but now. I see how lucky I am to not have that because you you're like a citizen of the world, you yeah, know. Yeah. It's kind of cool. And New York is one of those international cities too. Yeah, I struggle to think what it would have been like being in this city during the pandemic, you know. And I I just I love the city. I lived here ten years, uh, and then I was born. I'm born forty minutes away, mm. so New York has always been a part of my heart. Uh, it's just as much as Ireland has, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, like what I said before, one of the things I love about it is it's it's diversity. I mean, you you walk down any street in New York City, you have no idea what you're going to see. Yeah. <laughs> and not only the diversity, but also the fact that, because I feel like in Europe a lot of times the um, foreigners are foreigners, you know, and they're not part really part of the fabric of the society and of the like they, they they kind of are you know pushed to have their own little you know communities and they're not really integrated that's right and here it's like i it's always part say of, it's part, it's part of, of, of it yeah. yeah and i always think like you're not a real new yorker if you're not from somewhere else you know kind i of. remember I'm, i was i worked in germany off and on nine years as i said mm. and you know my german is nowhere near as good as it should be but I remember once, you know, you could get a, you get great kebabs in Germany. Yeah. Because there's loads of Turkish immigrants. Yeah. But so I would always enjoy a good kebab whenever we had a bit of time off. And I remember this, we were just being loud and speaking in English. And I remember this one fella going, go back. <laughs> he said in English to us, go back. And I just, I didn't even think. I went, aber ich arbeite hier. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like that. <laughs> Wow. But it was a good kebab. But this is the thing. In Germany, the, like, citizenship laws, you can be born in Germany and they won't give you a passport. So a lot of the Turkish... Really? Turkey, yes. So a lot of the Turkish immigrants um, have kids that are born in Germany and they're not German. Wow. You have to have a German parent. Ireland's getting more strict now, too. I became a citizen in Ireland in 94. Mm -hmm. uh, but, they, and, but since then, it's gotten more strict, yeah. It's gotten more strict. And I think that ma makes a difference because that's also that's another reason why this like concept of an American is so weird and artificial and made up by you know some people that have their weird agendas. But it, mm. it, you're born here, you're American. I you think, know? In a, and also the fact that in America you have the choice. It's the choice to become a citizen of America because you can live here forever. And not be a citizen, you know, as long as you yeah. got your green card or whatnot. Right. A lot of people are more than happy to live the rest of their days with just a green card. Yeah. But I think when people choose to become an American, that's an active choice. That's, you know, you got to sit in a class and you got to take a test. I just did it. Did I just you? did it two months ago. Oh, my gosh. Three months ago in October. What did you think of it? What was the process like? <laughs> well, 
Well, first of all, I was pretty annoyed because, like I said, I we came here when I was eight, and my parents are artists, and they are afraid of bureaucracy. So, what they made them choose to come over here? They wanted to. Uh, my dad is a playwright and an actor, and he had a play that was very successful. So they had a bit of money, and they thought they would get out for like six months. And uh, my mom had never been to New York, and they came here, and she fell in love with New York. She was like, "I want to live here for six months," and then now it's been thirty years. Cool. So they they got stuck here, but it was just you know they just and they also wanted to give us their kids like this experience of you know living somewhere else. I remember all the Stadttheaters in Deutschland, man. Yeah, the, the theaters so the heavily fun- subsidized. Oh my there. god, the funding! I mean, it's like a town, you get a town population like thirty thousand. Every single one the, has a state theater. And the Stadttheater is I've yeah. is impeccable. Yeah, yeah. You, I've met I met techies backstage. <clears throat> That, you know, like electricians and whatnot that used to do residential and commercial businesses. And they would they would quit that job to work for the Stasi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're good. They're well-paid jobs. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Be- such a love for theater. Great opera yeah. in Germany. Yeah, Man, yeah, all of it. It's kind of weird. Some of it's really weird. But all in, of it is but weird. But in a great way, you know. Everything in Germany is weird. <laughs> Germans are so weird. So weird. But so I was on visas here. For a long time. So, so you would have to go back and forth all the time? No, so we got here. I was on a student visa. Then when I turned 18, I, for me, I was like American. I grew up here. I was eight when we moved here. So I didn't know sure. about immigration laws. So I was like, oh, great. I'll go to Germany for a few years and study acting there because it's free because I'm a German citizen. Then I'll come back and get my green card. I didn't know that if you're on a visa and you leave and the visa expires, you're you got, back to square one. Yeah, yeah. I thought like logically, I'll come back, I'll just show that I grew up here and then I can apply for a green card. So that was like, I, I went to Germany, I moved there for like four years, studied there, started working there, came back, went to see a lawyer and he was like, you're fine. no. Oh my gosh. And I, and that was such wow. a shock because That's especially- You grew up there. Exactly, especially because I had gone to Germany to kind of also see like, how do I feel here? Do I like it here? And I hated it. And I felt like such an alien. I, I felt like I was green with fucking antennas coming out of my head. Like I felt so not German and out of place there. And so I couldn't wait to come back. And when that happened, I was like, what? So then I had to get O one visas, which is the artist, uh, the alien of extraordinary ability. Visa. Oh, and that, that's a little tricky to get, isn't it? You Super have to, you have to tricky. find a sponsor and all that. You yeah. have to find a sponsor, you and then you have yeah. to prove that you are an alien of extraordinary ability. Which that's, I was like twenty five. I was fucking like so. I um, never had that because I, I was born here. And there's a lot of limitations. You can't. Join equity, and you can't. Some jobs you're not allowed to do because they're like, "Hang on, I thought you were this extraordinary artist. What are you doing waiting tables? Yeah, uh, surviving. Yeah, I waited (laughs) tables despite that. I'm American now, so you can't deport me. Um, (laughs) And and that was rough and expensive, and and also it was this thing of like, okay, so now I'm back home. But I'm not. I'm not even a permanent resident. You know, wow. I'm an alien here too. I felt like an alien over there. You, yeah, you don't then belong I, anywhere. Exactly. Then I finally got a green card, and then I only became eligible last year to become a citizen. Wow. Then, to be to become a citizen and keep my German citizenship, you have to get permission from Germany. Really? To have dual citizenship. I didn't have to do that, I guess. Because I know have to, like, they have write... different agreements with different countries. And in Ireland, there was is, they just let it, okay, you're No, dual. that's not an American. That's a German thing. A German thing, okay. They right, don't right. want you to have dual citizenship, so they have a to give you permission. Don't. Yeah. So you have to hand in like a I know, fucking... I know like... China, you you have to renounce well, okay. your citizenship if you want to be a citizen anywhere else. Yeah. China, yeah. I I can see that, but come on now. So I had to go through this whole process. They almost didn't give me the permission. I had to pull the Jew card, really, to get them to like just shut the fuck up and give me this fucking piece of paper because I'm Jewish. My grandfather was stripped of his citizenship. So by fuck. German law, any Jew who's a descendant of someone who was stripped of their citizenship or persecuted by the Nazi regime is entitled to German citizenship. So I was like, you can can not give me this permission, but if I lose the citizenship, I can just go and reapply. And then they were like, okay, it's fine. Something, well, it's not the same thing, but I remember I was like 20 years old and I was chatting to this American guy about my age 
And he was like, oh, yeah, I was born in Jersey. And he's like, oh, where are you? Uh, and I, suddenly he says to me, did you register for the draft yet? I was like, what? <laughs> what? He's like, oh, dude, you, you got to do that on your 18th birthday. I'm like, really? No. And I went home and I said, Dad, do I have to register for the draft? And he's like, oh. So I called up the American Embassy in Dublin. I said, do I need to register for the draft? And they're like, how old are you? I'm like, I'm 20. Right, well, if you do it now, we won't arrest you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if it's that strict anymore, oh, but yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I. It was wild becoming an American citizen. It was, like, weird because it seemed like I'd been one anyway. And they the, ask you all these questions. You and you have to do, have to do your, And even if you're living outside of the U.S., you still got to file your taxes. Oh, yeah, 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 because of course. It's, 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 America is one of the few countries. Oh, I mean, they want I don't, the taxes. I don't need to do my Irish taxes because no. I don't live there. But if yeah. it was the other way around, I've still got to file in America. Yeah, yeah, you have to file. And and then you, ha you have to go in and sit in a little office with a person, and they run through these questions like, uh, one of them was, have you ever been a <laughs> habitual drunkard? I'm like, is this a trick question? Am I supposed to say yes? Then one was, um, have you ever recruited child soldiers? What's a habitual drunkard? I know, exactly. You're so like, you just drink in the same place? I think it meant Irish. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Have you been ever been Irish <laughs> is what they meant to say. Um, have you ever recruited child soldiers? No. No. no, no. But who? who's that for? Who's like, damn it. I knew I shouldn't have done that. Uh, he looked 18. To uh, be honest, he looked he 18. Told me, he told me he was 18. <laughs> he told me he was 18. He was, ah. great, he was a great fighter. Then there's one question. Have you ever engaged in prostitution? And when the guy asked me that, he couldn't look me in the He, he like looked away. He went like this. He went, have you ever? Well, why is that a problem? I know. Right? I mean, child I was like, child define prostitution. I can understand. But sex workers, I mean, that's yeah. kind of. Do cow otters. Uh, count. <laughs> it's the German scheiße cow porn that I was in a problem. Yeah, um, yeah. And then they give you a certificate. That's exciting. But on the certificate, and I did not know this, and this is so funny to me, they put your name, your birth date, that makes sense, a little picture, and then it says marital status. And I'm, I've, I've been married, so I'm divorced. So it says divorce. What is that? Can you... Can can a person get over it? Wow! I can't even hang this up on my wall now. Well, sure you can. There's no, nothing wrong with being divorced. Why can't I'm they divorced. put something nice? I had a, I, I'm on my second wife now. Nice. Uh, See, I my theory is being divorced once is sad. You have to get divorced and remarried at least three more times to reach Elizabeth Taylor diva status. <laughs> whenever somebody before I got divorced and people would say, "Oh, I just got a divorce," I'd be like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." Yeah. But then after I got divorced and people would say that to me, I would like. Congrats. Fair play. <laughs> <laughs> you're obviously, you're obviously going to be happier now. <laughs> but come on, they could put something nice on the certificate, like yeah, helped like an single. old lady across the road once. Yeah. And what's next? What are they going to put? Chlamydia times two, crabs, age 14. <laughs> Did they ask you that? <laughs> no. But, you know. um, but yeah, I was shocked. I was like, what? Why? Why? What? Whose business is that? I didn't have to do that. A lot of my Irish friends have. Yeah. I remember one of my Irish friends did it the day Trump was sworn in. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. And it was on the TV when he's in the waiting room. Oh. And, you know, and Trump, oh, oh yeah. And yeah. he was like, uh, I think that I'm good. <laughs> he, like, ran out of the room. So um, I have to ask you this. Do you yeah. usually get um, cast Irish or American? Very good question. So I kind of, when I was in the UK, I was I was either the Yank or the Paddy. Mm-hmm. But now that I'm over here, I'm a Yank or a Paddy or a Brit. Oh. So I can do a lot of the accents. Mm. I try to keep my pigeonhole as large as possible. Because you know? <laughs> I think every actor should. You know, Every actor should not uh -huh. allow themselves to be boxed into anything. You should always try and resist that. Yeah, if you know? possible. If, you're, if, you're, if you can get away with it. If yeah. you can get away with it, exactly, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, <clears throat> with Arthur Morgan, I was lucky enough to get... Uh, cowboy, you know, yeah. but I do a lot of Irish work too and a lot of British work. Yeah. But you'd been in a Western before that, I saw. Yeah, yeah, I did a th uh, we did a thing about Custer's Last Stand with uh, Maggie Smith's son, Toby Stevens, great wow. guy. 
We filmed that on location where Custer died in really? South Dakota. Shit. That was wonderful. And I remember on, our, on one of our days off, some of the horse wrangling, I got friendly with some of the horse wranglers, and we just went around Mount Rushmore on horseback. Just, wow. That was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shot, uh, 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 film, man. We, we, it was so beautiful. And we worked with all these, uh, Sioux. Lakota, right. mm-hmm. Lakota guys, man, they were some of the best horsemen I've ever seen. Yeah, they were riding man. bareback, you know, it's, it's 10, 12 year old kids just jumping on the horse without a saddle and just whipping away, man. They were amazing. They were amazing. That's that was a cool. really cool shot, which is one of the few survivors of the of Custer's last stand. American, mm. obviously. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you think that helped you with Arthur Morgan? I don't know. I mm. think it might have done. Yeah, I remember when they. If they Googled me, they might have seen it. So they were like, oh, okay, I, he can write, yeah, somewhat. And that's, I mean, I've, I actually have never done, I actually have never done, I, I've done a little bit of motion capture, but not like full on, you know, it, it was, it, it wasn't really acting. It was more about the movement, sure, you know? Sure, um, sure, But I love it. I but it's it. basically, it's, it's, it's your, it, it basically is the same as being on camera. It's fascinating. As on camera acting. It's right? kind of a cross between stage and, fi- and film. Yeah. Do you let yourself, because the way you play Arthur and Morgan. And every studio does it kind of differently too. You know, it's so, it's, I, it's such a fascinating medium. I love it. What I think is so cool about the way that you play Arthur Morgan is that you, there's like this very fine line between it being very real, but it's but you're also playing to the medium, which is you are like a very um, very like uh, bold character. When you're performing in a video game, especially if you're the playable character, and you know this, you know a lot of your work is done for you because the audience are you, right? So they all automatically identify with you. Yeah. You know, you don't even you don't have to win them over. Right. Unless you suck and then they're going to be like I don't like this video game. Yeah. But you know, a lot of, a lot of you don't have you don't have to win them over at the beginning cuz they're you, they're automatically going to identify with you and that that makes a lot of your work easy. But and then the, the, it comes with a lot of other challenges as well in that you don't you you can't anticipate the player's style, you know. Mm. Like in, for with Red Dead, for example, you know, you can make Arthur a bastard or you can make him an honorable guy. It's up to you how mm. you decide to play. Mm. And so I would, being conscious of that, I'd have to come up with a performance that would would fit or match right. both both styles. You know, that's so cool. So in some ways it was challenging, but in other ways a lot of your work is done for you because they automatic the, the 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 gamer is is not a passive spectator. Mm. They're they're a participant of the narrative. They're in it, and you're that you're you're the representation of them. But so then, how does that change your performance to when you're on when you're doing a movie? Well, when you're doing a movie, I think you can you you have complete control over who the character is. You have complete mm. control over how it should be portrayed and whatnot. But when you're when you're playing a playable character in a video game, you have to you have to take into consideration what the player's style might be. You have to take into consideration the narrative of the video game and you have to take into consideration that the player is going to identify with you because they are you, but in another but also you know, it's, it's a little bit more tricky uh, because they, I guess, what am I trying to say? <laughs> You're like, you have to be a genius. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you have to be brilliant. Yeah, you got it, Lucy. Yeah, no, but how do you take that into consideration? Like, what does that actually mean in terms of your choices or your performance? Well, with Red Dead, I didn't have to really take it into consideration until the latter half of the story. Because that's when the player's behavior would become established, and mm. then, and that's when it would affect the storyline. Mm-hmm. You know, but in the first half of the of the narrative, you, you're still gauging what kind of behavior the player is doing. You know, mm-hmm. is this a person who's going to go into Valentine and shoot and kill everyone, or is this a person who's going to help people? You know, and and by the by the point by about when you get about halfway through the game, that behavior is established, and then we would write different scenes for different. Outcomes. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't really a, an issue until we were doing the latter half of the story. 
But by that point, I was like, okay, is this guy a bastard or is this guy an honorable mm. guy? And sometimes they would write different scenes and sometimes they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And when they didn't, that was where the challenge lied. So I would have to come up with a performance that was ambiguous enough to match both, mm -hmm. both different ways. Mm -hmm. And that I, I really appreciate. That was fun. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that because it was a challenge, you know. Do, it, do you think that there's a lot of you in, in Arthur Morgan? Yeah. I can't help but. Yeah. Yeah. There's part of me in everything. Right. Yeah. And do you feel, because in a way that's like even better than playing a character on camera because you get to explore sides that every character always has, right? Like those those two sides are always there. Like somebody is, isn't is just a bastard or just a good person, people right? Are, people are complicated. Yeah, people are complicated. You know, they contradict themselves all the time. And I, I love those contradictions. Yeah, and it's cool. In a way, you get to kind of live out those things that you have to make very subtle, usually, yeah. in a yeah. character. Yeah, and I think it makes this, it makes them more real, too. Right. People contradict themselves all the time. Whatever's in their best interests, you know, they can turn on a dime, you know. Um, and I, I love exploring that. And you guys worked on it for five years? Yeah, I was on it for five years, yeah. That's crazy. Oh, a contract, yeah. You Changed knew it was going to be five years? No. Okay. I thought it was going to be three. But you knew it was three years? I thought it was going to be three. That's crazy. Because GTA Five, the actors were three years on that. Mm. So I thought it was going to be similar to that. I have to ask you something that I read about you. Um, I read that you began by cutting out newspaper clippings for, like, reading to blind people? Yeah, so Is that I, true? <laughs> I, I narrate audiobooks. Yeah. And um, I started out, my dad used to do it. He, 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 we would put it on cassette. Yeah. Uh, he would read newspaper for the blind. Uh, he started out with the Star Ledger in Jersey. And then when we went over to Ireland, he started it up himself. And, and he just did that, f like, as a hobby for fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. And I would help him. I would help cut out the names. I was five, six years old. And I remember we would, we would put it, we would be able to record 12 cassettes at a time. That's amazing. And what kind of stuff did you record? It was, new, it was whatever the local newspaper Oh, was. local newspaper yeah. stuff. Yeah. Wow. So you, so they would, so how did that work? Because by the time you recorded it and got it to them, wasn't that already old news? <laughs> yeah. It, it was weekly newspapers. So yeah, it, they, okay. they get it about a week late. Oh, okay. Typically. Yeah. They're like, big blizzard coming. <laughs> it already <laughs> happened, Mike. It already happened. Yeah. They never wanted to They're hear like that. Buried they, in snow. They always wanted to hear who got arrested and who got fined and all that. You know, that was, that was, and the obituaries were very keen. Like they always wanted the obituaries. Wow. That's, that's dark. Yeah. So yeah. you, um, so you were like 12 reading, uh, recording. I would do, I would help my dad. I would help my dad. And then eventually is something that I stumbled into with doing audiobooks. And I still, I mean, that was what I was doing the whole pandemic. That was pretty much all I was doing. Mm. I've got about 120 books now. Do you have, do you have your kids help you? No. No? No. How old are they? Seven and nine now. Oh, okay. They're too friggin' loud. They'd be loud. like, shut up, dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, they're too loud. Do oh they play gosh. Red Dead Redemption? Too young. They're too young. How but old do you have to be to play that? I game? reckon maybe 12, 13, they oh, can okay. start. But by that point, they probably won't want to. But they know, right? They know. Yeah, yeah. It's like, whatever, you know? It's not <laughs> it's not cool to them. Do they want to be actors? My younger son wants to be a YouTuber. Oh, oh that's what, that's the new thing. Yeah. Of course, people don't want to be actors anymore. No. He wants to be, uh, and do what on YouTube? Play video games. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, the older one? He's, uh, you know, he's kind of doing his own thing. Do Call they him. have, do they, like, tell people that they're Irish? Do they identify as Irish? Do they, like, have a, like, I, I got them connection? To, I, I was able to bring them over in 2019 before the pandemic happened, and I'm really grateful for that. But, uh, you know, I, I, I gave them Irish names. My eldest is Colin. My youngest is Rory. Hmm. My mother was going to name me Rory. 
But she figured, oh, there's no way the Yanks will pronounce that properly. <laughs> I dated a Ruri. Did you? A Scottish, a Scottish guy, and it's, it was spelled R U A R A I D H. Oh, and for yeah. like the first yeah. year of our relationship, I was just always like, yeah. hey, because yeah. I, I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to pronounce this right. I just like kind of went like, hey, you. Come that, here. <laughs> that is one of the ways. Yeah, I, I, went for, I went for a bit more simpler with my buddy. So R-U-A-R-I Fada, which is probably the simplest. Or, or you could go R-O-R-O-R-Y, but I'm not going to do the angle. Wait, so R-U-A-R-I Fada. And a Fada is like an right. accent grave. An accent grave yeah. from Ireland. It's called grava? A Fada. A Fada. Fada. I just yeah. made that up. It's, Grav. Little, <laughs> it's just the little sh over the eye. Mm, yeah. Okay. They don't have that in German, do they? I know they have it in French no. and Spanish. They have this. Yeah. That's a different the thing. Umlaut. They have the Hitler salute. Yeah. <laughs> um, they have the umlaut. So then they do have an, uh, like an Irish identity. They have I Irish try names. to. I try to instill it in them, mm. but uh, I want to do it more. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna, and your really, wife is American, though. She is, yeah. She's yeah. from Connecticut, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's uh, she's like many Americans. You know, she's got a bit of Ukrainian, some right. Irish. You mm. know. Yeah. Uh, I, I, mostly Eastern European. My wife. Okay. My wife's roots. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I always think that like sayings, proverbs, stuff like that is very symbolic of the mentality of a people. You know, like in German, we have a saying: um, if somebody's kind of a fool we say he, they have tomatoes on their eyes which is so weird and like random and like what the fuck does that even mean do you have a favorite irish saying my oh. sister told me there's a saying in ireland um uh, where people go your breath smells so bad one could hang a hat on it <laughs> have you heard this what is that <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I have. Is that real? You've heard it? Yeah, I have heard that. <laughs> it's probably been said to me a few times. No, you no. put me on the spot now. I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, the Irish have got loads of sayings. It's yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Some brilliant stuff. Right now you put me on the spot. No, that's okay. Don't worry. I'm trying to think, but. Um, I also have um, some questions I need to ask you. I have, um, this is uh, the poll questionnaire all about being an immigrant. So first thing that comes to your mind, no pressure. Ready? Yeah. Okay. In a movie about the Statue of Liberty, who would you cast as the Statue of Liberty? Oh, oh, okay. Well, she's got a Roman nose, hasn't she? So I might go for an Italian. Okay. Uh, uh, you know who's got great features? Helen Hunt. Maybe. Helen Hunt Helen would Hunt. be the Statue of Liberty. She kind of looks a little bit like her. She looks a little it. bit like her. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's go with it. Or someone with um, some more, maybe a, someone with Roman features. Yeah. Okay. If you could add a face to Mount Rushmore, who would you add? Ooh. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> well, it would probably have to be an American. Who's a great American? Why? It doesn't have to be an American. Does it not have to no. be? No. With all the rest no, of them. No, this is okay. immigrant jam, baby. Okay. Well, in that case, uh... Maybe Brendan Behan. Brendan Behan? He's I don't an Irish know playwright. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Just some <laughs> totally obscure person. So people walk up there, they're yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah. He was a very famous drunk. Uh, like a, a habitual a, 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 drunkard. An, an intellectual drunk. Mm -hmm. So I, I think he would get a kick out of being next to all them presidents. Yeah. Perfect. Great. I love it. <laughs> and here, the quintessential American, a drunk Irishman. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's the most American thing you've ever done? Oh, my gosh. Probably wear a fanny pack. <laughs> I've only ever done it once. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Okay, great. That's great. <laughs> um, uh, it, oh, if you could add an amendment to the Constitution, what would you add? Oh dear, well, that's that's a serious one, yeah, Roger. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I would. Uh, Everyone must play Red Dead Redemption Two <laughs> <laughs> once they turn twelve. I don't know. I would kind of reevaluate the whole right to bear arms thing. You know. Okay. I don't think they anticipated. Okay, easy, Roger. <laughs> We're, we don't want to lose half of our audience here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What the hell are you saying? Hey? 
Coming um, from Arthur Morgan. Yeah, it was a video game, though. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I'm real. all for I'm it's all real. for responsible gun ownership. It's just half of the gun owners that don't do that. So. Yep, that's true. <laughs> Moving on. Um, okay, what is your favorite word in your language? <laughs> What's your favorite Irish like slang? Oh well. Apparently, smithereens is an Irish word. Smithereens. I love that. Oh, and the the um, what does smithereens mean? I, it's just loads of tiny little bits. Loads of tiny little bits. Yeah, I love it. Smithereens. I might be wrong, but I think I believe smithereens. No, is Gaelic. that's what it is now. Yeah. And and the 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 foot wart, warts. How? What did you call them earlier? Chest warts. Uh, about in no, Deutsch. no, no. The 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 verrucas. Verrucas. Yeah, the Brits call them that too. Which sounds like they're planter warts. A over restaurant here. in the East Village. Yeah. Um, but they're they're different than the most normal warts because they actually grow up into your foot. They don't grow out. I, I know that's from horrible. experience. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. How do you know you have them if they're in your oh, foot? Oh, you know. How? You know, it's uncomfortable. Oh, and you okay. gotta get acid and burn them off. <laughs> oh my you, yeah, God. you put Vaseline over <laughs> the skin so that you don't burn the skin, and then you put you burn it off. <laughs> okay, three more questions. Um, what American food would you ban if you were president? Ooh. Okay. You know, I don't. I don't have any dislike. I mean, there's very few foods I don't like. Um, I remember the. the there's a sandwich mm -hmm. in Britain. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going off sub tangent now, but there's a sandwich okay. in Britain yeah. called the banjo. Oh my God. So it's fried bread and tomatoes and bacon and beans and black pudding and Ugh. sausage and egg no. and runny yolk and, um, and, and brown sauce Ugh. and ketchup. Ugh. And the reasons why- oh, I just got goosebumps. The reason why it's called a I banjo- I just got verrucas. It's because everyone, who, you bite into it, and then you go like that. No! <laughs> so that's not... So what What would I ban in America? You know what? Spray cheese is pretty rank. <laughs> rank. I love yeah. that. Spray it cheese is pretty is, rank. Spray cheese is pretty disgusting. Spray cheese is pretty... It tastes pretty better long. than you think it would, but it's still disgusting. I have a theory, though. The reason why there's so much gross food in America is because of people from the UK coming here. Maybe. Like all the net... Like macaroni pies. Like a pie with pasta in it mm, yeah. that's a, that's like a scottish thing that they brought like all the gross really gross stuff the scots deep fry everything deep fry everything cadbury cream eggs mars, mars bars. bars yeah yep yep the the sausage rolls oh, they're great that they like but they're like deep fried and then it's oh crazy. i haven't had that no no um okay if you could deport one american who would it be <laughs> <laughs> i trump Trump. Trump. Yeah. You think that would solve it? No. Okay, great. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, and finally, um, the most important question. Um, do you know how I can meet David Hasselhoff? Uh, he, 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 go, he, does, he goes on the West End in London a few, bit, a few times, apparently. So you think just hang out yeah. in London a bit? Or maybe, you know, maybe if you just, maybe if you went... He lives in L.A., right? So if you went into the ocean... He's in Malibu, doesn't he? said, help, I'm drowning. Maybe he'd show up. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, come up with... Many a, a German has drowned that way, actually. <laughs> come up with a talking car. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he, he, he's quite a successful pop career in Germany, doesn't he? He's, he's a singer, Huge. apparently. Yeah. Oh, my God, yes. Apparently... He's, I, I have been to a David Hasselhoff concert. Really? I was six years old in Hamburg. Yes, and the hit song was I've been looking for freedom. Oh, was that the one so when the Berlin long. Wall came down? He came out with a single then, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He thinks he's responsible for the Berlin Wall coming down. He thinks it was him. <laughs> Good yeah. on you, David. Yeah, yeah. I wrote him a letter when I was uh, seven or eight that I never sent that I have framed at my house. And it says that he... He's my I, I, he's like you're my idol. Even though I'm a girl, you're my idol, which I think I was ahead of my time, you know. Um, and I ask him for an autograph, and then I put little hearts, and it's written on Ghostbusters stationery. Oh, you should send it to him now. <laughs> no, it's framed. It's in my house. That's amazing. Hasselhoff, yeah. get on to it. Come oh. on, Hasselhoff. Oh, and then also, um, Roger, I have I'm doing um, immigrant jam approved. Uh, one thing for every episode 
This is Immigrant Jam approved and written by an Irish American guy, Empire of Pain, The Secret History of the Sackler Dynasty. Oh. You know the Sacklers? The yeah. Oxycontin yeah. people? Yeah. This is amazing. Written by Patrick Radden Keefe. Highly recommend it. Irish American. Oh. Okay, there you go. Um, finally, do you think that Irish people ever stop being Irish? even when they've lived in the United States for centuries, hundreds of years. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think anybody stops being who they are. That's true. Yeah, unless they want to. Yeah. And then even if they want to, though, it's like they try too hard and then they end up, you know, exemplifying the thing that they're trying not to be. That's true. That's um, like Oedipus almost. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. That just took a very profound turn. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, do you have anything that you would like to plug? Go on to my Twitter. I, I got a link tree thing on my Twitter, rclark98. Check it out. You'll be able to find some of my audiobooks. I do a few audiobooks in, of, of the old Western genre, too. You know, the old Five and Dime novels that came around around the early 1900s and stuff. Cool. A few of those. So those are audiobooks that you... I've produced, Picked, yeah. produced. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Check That's it out. Great. And uh, yeah, there's a lot, a few video games coming out that obviously I can't talk about. Obviously. I'll get shot. Yep. Uh, but there's a few... I can talk about some. I'm an Irish rabbit coming up in one game called Lunathon. I don't... Maybe that's next year or so. That's so cool. Me and Troy Baker are working on a video game. I can great. talk about that. It's... Uh, sci-fi horror It'll hopefully come out in a year or two great so did you have to go to la to do that we did it in london oh nice yeah, we all did right it in london okay cool uh, yeah. amazing irish rabbit i love that i can't <laughs> yeah. wait for that it's a bit of a difference from arthur yeah. <laughs> yeah that's so cool that's one of the cool things about doing voice or video game work that you can play all these characters yeah yeah that's like amazing. I said, I, I try to keep my pigeonhole as large as possible. <laughs> yeah, your rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a rabbit hole now. All right, follow Roger on Instagram, on Twitter. Check out the audiobooks. Uh, you know, write him a message. Send him some love. Um, and follow us, Immigrant Jam. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. If you like what you just heard, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, recommend to all your friends. And if you hated it, recommend it to your enemies. Thank you for listening to Immigrant Jam, the podcast with me, Lucy Pohl. Have a delicious and nutritious day.